Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Stewart's Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to see more of my videos or learn more about my online classes and workshops, you can click on the links that appear at the end of the video. And if you enjoy this, be sure to share and like it. Hi, this is Rick. I'm here in my studio. And for this video, I'm going to be doing a small landscape. It's going to be a vertical composition. It's going to uh, be a landscape that has a, a mountain, some trees, some water, and rocks in it. And it's going to be this vertical composition. Now, I didn't use any reference photo for this. I just started sketching in my sketchbook. You can see with my hand beside this about the size of the sketch. So a relatively small set, sketch, just a few inches. And uh, I identified my horizon line. And I just started putting in some shapes, uh, identifying big shapes for the water and tree lines and the sky. And started putting some uh, little trees and some rocks in here. And I just did it again with a few adjustments and, and uh, did a value study of it. So the sky, and I, there's a, uh, a mountain I'm going to put in here. I didn't do it in my sketches, but I decided to stick it in the painting. And uh, some rocks, and I have sunlight coming this way. But this is what I'm, I'm starting with, and this is what I'll use as reference uh, for my painting, uh, in particular looking at the value study. So for the painting, I'll be going with this view on my screen, so you'll see the palette and you'll see the painting. Now this is an 8x10 painting, it's a vertical uh, composition, so it's portrait format. And uh, I've already gone ahead and I put some masking fluid down here, uh, just put some, taking a fine line masking fluid pen, and I've put some uh, highlights uh, in the water, some ripples of the water. And then I've splattered with a toothbrush some masking fluid on some of the trees. It creates a little sparkle I like sometimes in the trees. And this is where I decided to stick in this mountain. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to start with a simple sky wash. So I'm going to be using some cerulean blue for this. It's very simple. I've got a wash brush here, and so I'm going to make this kind of a partly cloudy day, just a just a, a little bit of break, uh, some just some clouds with some blue and uh, some sky in between some of these clouds. Uh, I'm not getting too involved with it. Uh, I'm just going to lighten that up, bring it down with some water. A light wash. And that's probably enough for me. So um, I'm going to pick up a little of the excess water that I have here, this bead, and it's right along the mountain. Sometimes I'll put in a soft edge. I'll work this down wet and wet, and I'll put in some trees. But I decided I'm just going to keep this fairly hard edge because I have this mountain back here. And uh, while I have this blue, I'm going to go ahead and take this wash brush and I'm going to drop some of this, this color in the water. Now keep in mind, like I said, I have I've put some masking fluid down here. So some of these areas right here that I'm painting are going to have some, some uh, white of the paper show through once I remove that masking fluid. And uh, uh, just using still cerulean blue, but I'll, I'll come in with a little, a little variation in this blue, a little darker color. But for right now, uh, I'm just keeping it fairly light and bringing that wash down. And of course, this will dry lighter once I dry it, which I'll do with a hairdryer. I'm picking up some of these beads here because uh, I have this masking fluid horizontally. It, it acts as a dam. I'm working at an angle about 20 degrees or so. So the moisture is coming down. And it gets caught in the areas where I have the masking and it can beat up. So I'm just picking up some of those extra areas of, of moisture. And so now I have a sky wash and I have some, some colors in the water. <clears throat> and now what I'm gonna do so I'm going to dry this with a hairdryer, uh, and then I'm going to start painting this mountain, and I'll work into the trees. Okay, so this is dry, and I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take a number six 
round brush. And this is a uh, Princeton Aqua Elite. It's a synthetic brush, but it, uh, I like it. It holds uh, paint well, um, has a nice point. And I'm going to take some cobalt blue and a little rose matter. And I'm going to make kind of a violet tone. And I'm going to drop some of that in my uh, mountain top here. We'll do the kind of a pattern of some snow. A few touches of some other areas over here. It's not a big shape, really. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's one of the larger shapes in here, but relative to the sky and everything else, it's a fairly small area, so not, not a lot going on in there. Take a little ultramarine blue and like just put just a, a touch darker blue while that's still wet. Give me some gradation in there, a little darker value, and uh, maybe a little more rose matter. To give me a red violet, and I'll add a little of that. So, even that very small area, I can have some interesting color. Okay, so I'm going to be putting some trees along here, and uh, so I think I'm going to hit that with a dryer real quick because I don't want that to bleed into the trees that I'm going to be putting in there. I want to keep that a clean line, and uh, then I'm going to mix some green. So that's dry, and uh, the mix, let's see, let me take, uh, this is a number eight round brush and we'll take some sap green little quinacridone gold i'm actually going to go with some uh, lighter colored trees out a tree line to start like some suns hitting out there and not a lot of it's more a shape it's not a lot of detail in there take some sap green with a little pyrrole red tone that down You want a little sharper point, so I'm going to go to the six round brush again. I want a smaller shape than what I was getting with that other brush. So just, you know, give the indication that there's some trees here. And sometimes I'll make, you know, this distant tree line more of a soft edge. I want to keep the, the mountain more uh, a crisp edge, a hard edge. So makes more sense to me to keep these that way too because they're closer to us. I'm going to add a little water and bring that down. Stick some cool gold in there maybe. So this is an underlying lay layer. And uh, now I'm going to, you know, this is between the mountain and uh, some of these trees are in the foreground. They, these are, you know, farther out there. Just paint that as a shape. And then these trees here are going to be overlapping that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I think uh, I want to I'm going to add a little bit of a cool, uh, a little darker, cooler tone in here, maybe in shadow, so I can differentiate it from the edge of this, where I'm going to have a little bit of a bright light hitting that. So I've taken a little royal blue and some uh, rose matter and we're going to actually throw a little darker tone right here against this edge. And I think I'll leave it like that. And maybe I'll bring this color down just so it fills in 
where I might leave some gaps when I put in these trees in the foreground. And I'll bring that green down to here. All right. So uh, I like to dry. I mean, I dry quite a bit when I'm painting in the studio because I like to maintain clean edges where needed. And I want things to run into each other. So I'm going to dry them because when I come along here, I, I don't want this to, to run into this edge here. I want to keep a hard edge there. So that's dry. And uh, now I'm going to take some of these colors that I had. And I'm going to bring some of those down along here. I'm going to keep this a lighter edge. Bring it down here. And over here, I'm going to get a little darker. Get a bigger wash brush here. I don't like to use a tiny, tiny brush in a large area. I just like to move to a larger brush and, and get the application done. Bring this across here over some of these rocks that I've drawn in. Okay, got a little bit of too much water on there. I'm going to lift that out. But I want to get some uh, a little bit of a darker tone in there. So I have some of this sap green, a little rose matter, a little more gold in this mixture too. But I'm going to bring some of that in here. So this is wet. You know, this is, uh, I already kind of applied the wash and I've come back in with a little darker tone. So that's going to gradate into that. And um, I'm going to put some, some trees or darker in here. As I look at this, though, I could, I, I'd be fine just taking this painting and, and leaving it like I'm looking across the, you know, some kind of a lake or a, a water inlet. I'm thinking this is more of a river coming out, but you know, the, looking at this, uh, just tree lines kind of in the distance uh, on the other side of this, and I, I'd be a be fine just going with that composition. But I'm going to put some trees here in the foreground, I think, and uh, we'll just keep going with the plan that I had. But I could see, like I said, just using these shapes here putting up these rocks and, and building a painting there. Right now, I want to dry that. I'm going to put some trees in here closer. Okay, so I'm going to go to, uh, this is a quill brush I like to use sometimes, and uh, get some gold, some green, a little sap green, quinacridone gold, a little royal blue, get a dark mixture here, add a little, say, a lizard and crimson. And we'll just start. I'll start with this. Let's see. We'll go with here. Adding a few trees in here. Let me get my bigger brush and we'll just create you know, some crown cover here bushes and shrubs and things. And uh, maybe a little darker.
a little red in here, some of this alizarin. That green a little more interesting. And I'll, I'll put some trunks in these. Take a flat brush. Put a little darker in here. bit more definition in this so I'm come in with a small brush and a darker value now I'm going to take a, a, a liner brush and this is burnt orange See, I think I'm gonna take oh, so number six. I'm gonna take a number one liner brush. I'm gonna put in some sure these kind of dried out uh, trees. And let's see, I'll put a little bit of the trunk on this. Gonna get too. Uh, I'm not gonna get over, go overboard with the trees. Just some simple shapes in there. And I've got my darkest values in the middle ground here. So I have a few dark values in here, but my darkest darks. So I'm working into this middle ground. I think I'm ready to take out some of this excess moisture, get this bead off of here, and uh, I'm going to dry that. I'm going to lift out a little bit in there. I'm going to start working on the water. Okay, so this is dry, and I've also cleaned my palette. And um, right now, what I'm going to do, actually, I think, is I'm going to paint these rocks. So I've got number six round brush. I'm going to take a little. Uh, Raw sienna, a little cerulean blue. Mix those back and forth a little bit. I have a warm, I have a cool. And I'm going to take a little uh, burnt orange, quinacridone burnt orange. And I'll use a little royal blue. I'm going to mix those two together. All right. Well, what we have is I'm gonna so I have a little more intense warm compared to this one, and I have a, a little deeper cool compared to this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here. Go a little more intense. Let's see, we're gonna go a little more intense back here.
take a little of the warm and the cool, cool on more of the shadow side. And uh, the ones in the foreground, I'm not going to have as intense. Well, you might think they're closer and they're, uh, they're going to be uh, add a little bit of this to it. Uh, you know, stronger. Uh, I really, the focus isn't going to be here, so I don't want to have the brightest and darkest colors. I'm going to have more of them up in this area here. And while I have this color, I'm going to drop some of that into the water. Wrapping these rock colors in here. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll scrape into these rocks. Give you an example here. So this is getting fairly dark, very blue. I don't really want it that blue. Let me bring some of this color in. Kind of drive that more towards the neutral. And um, drop a little of this here in the water. And while that's pretty dark at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a scraper here and I'm going to make that look a little more rock like. So I scrape that in. I'll do a little scrape in here. And I have to do this when it's, the, you know, it's wet and uh, shiny or it, it just won't work. Um, that one might have been a little too dry, so a little bit. Okay. So I've got another one here, but I don't want I want to have a clean edge, so I'm gonna wait till I, I can dry that. I'm gonna put a bright color here. A little darker here. And I think I need to uh, give that a scrape. And back here, we're going to make these some fairly bright tones. I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight in there. So we have some rocks in the distance. And I think these are actually dry enough that I can feel comfortable making them mark. I'll leave a light edge. Let's see if we pick a little of that value up into the water. Same here. Pick up some of that in the water. And I'm going to go to this one. Up 
Hang in some of this. I'll shove some of this in the water here. Get a bit of a broken edge as I do that. I'm dragging the side of my brush, the belly of the brush, and remember I've got some masking fluid so it's helping to create some of that texture in here. All right, so got those in there. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take a, a half inch flat brush, take a little of this royal blue, I'm going to take some of those neutral colors that are floating around my palette, tone that blue down a little. Um, but I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag the belly of this a little bit more. Add some water. I want to get a, see, we'll go a little darker over here. Once more of a wash, I don't want it all to be, you know, all textured. And overdone so a little darker wash here with some breaks and remember when I lift up that, that masking fluid we're gonna see more uh, highlights coming through you want to make sure when you're when you're doing something like this paint these ripples you know, when these ripples are going behind the rocks, so you don't want to have them stop short of that. You want to bring them to the edge, or they'll look like a bunch of shapes just floating in space, and they won't they won't connect, and it won't make sense. So that's probably enough of that value, and uh, maybe I'll take a little bit more going across here. And I want to get just a few deeper touches of this royal blue. I want to go a little darker right back in here because this is really where I want more of the attention. That's where my darkest values are. But not that I don't have some other places, but Just a little deeper. So my darkest values are right in that middle ground. Okay, so let me dry this. So that's dry, and I've also cleaned my palette. And I'm going to take this pickup eraser, and I'm going to, I'm going to pull off the masking tool that I put on before I started to paint. Start to see some of those highlights, some of the splashing, you know, the splashes of the water hitting here, and it's, it's going to give me a little sparkle back here. And I'm going to, I'm going to glaze over that with kind of a yellow green. So we'll get a brush here. I'm going to take a little uh, hands of yellow, a little sap green. We'll go with that. Maybe a little gold. Lacquer and gold. And I'm just going to kind of glaze over these, these areas back here. So what it does is it it just gives me that uh, kind of light, that split, the texture and pattern of uh, the splatter. Just gives me the feeling of light bouncing around off of leaves and everything. It gives that light, uh, bright texture. That's just something I like to do sometimes on my landscapes. Get a little sparkle in it. I use the same technique if I want snow. And maybe I'll lighten that a little bit. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of brushwork in the water. Just a little bit. I'm taking some my half inch flat brush, a little of this royal blue, thin down a little bit. I just want to, it's hard to say, tell sometimes when you're putting that masking fluid down where it's all going and the shapes you're making. So I'll come back in and 
and make some all some some changes by glazing over where I feel it might be a little too busy or something or I want less texture I'll just glaze over that but I think that also, that's going to work A little bit more of that. And, and I think we're going to just touch a few of these rocks. And then if I want, I can do a little lifting in the trees. So I'm going to take this this, hat, this angled nylon brush. And I'm just going to... It's just damp. It doesn't have a bead on it. It's just damp. Put a little of that water on there. Lift out. Anywhere I might want that. Drag some of that color up and make a few marks. And then what I'll do when I lift out sometimes, it's too much of a, a, a long of an area and I, I'll break it up. I'll come back in and glaze and break that area I lifted just a little bit. so. It seems right so it's not too long and there's some feels like foliage is covering that up and it's not all right if I, you know if I wanted I could go a little darker on some of these trees but I think I'm just gonna kind of leave them as they are pretty much So we're going to get more more of an involved painting I, I do a little bit more in some of these hills but get that nice dark value back there some of this royal blue sap green maybe some burnt orange yeah, I'll take a little lizard take that as a neutral let's go just a little darker back here just to help draw your attention into this Put some lower ground cover, some darker shapes. And I'll back off that a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna get just a little darker. A few darker marks on these rocks to help anchor those in. Now let's give that a dry. 
actually, before I do, I'm going to take some of this darker color. I want a few, a few uh, trunks in here. Working with the where I lift it out, but also some darker. I want to have some darker marks in there. Okay, let me dry this. Okay, so that's dry. I think that's about where I'm going to stop. I could fuss with this a little bit more, but uh, so there's a you know a little vertical composition. I started with this, just a little bit of sketching with a pen in my uh, sketchbook, then doing a little bit of a value study, and uh, then I just drew uh, a larger version of that on here. Just really the big shapes and indicating where I want some trees. I put in a mountain here, painted in a few cloud shapes. But uh, like I said, this is just all from imagination, just doing a little sketching and uh, trying to create, uh, you know, an interesting landscape. So I hope you enjoyed that and thanks for watching.